and gentlemen, thank you for joining today and welcome to Fridos. This is your host Nino, inviting you to an episode in which we shall attempt, if fortune favors our attempt, to fulfill the will of the people, for it was viewer Steffi's suggestion that I install Fridos with Gem. And I thought that the request is suitable out of multiple considerations. First of all, of course, Gem being a classical desktop environment having been developed by digital research is an interesting target in and of itself. FreeDOS is perhaps the funkiest DOS available. It is certainly having as much in common with the terse and sparse systems of old times as uh, Las Vegas fireworks and lights show of a DOS system. So I thought, let's go ahead, let's do that. But then it turns out that I fell through Alice rabbit hole down to Virgil's hell and had to cross a couple of circles until, until things succeeded. And the details of this I would like to present herein so that your path may be easier. The other unfortunate circumstance which this is coinciding with is that some miscreants have taken down apparently archive.org. I see no glory in this and I'm appalled at the utter lack of ethics. This certainly is shameful to their ancestors and family to not have taught them better ethics than to do something which is very much the equivalent of burning a library. Unfortunately, in a lot of my future videos, many resources that you will need for the experiments are hosted on the Internet Archive, so you might have temporary difficulties following along those, whereas a quick DOS experiment is possible right away. Also, let me state that in the beginning, as you can certainly hear, I am still recuperating from quite a lung infection. And I apologize if you note that in that video, but such are times, and we must nonetheless move ahead. Well, then let's do just that. Here, on freedos.org, we go to download freedos 1.3. Scrolling down here, we're having a couple of options, and we're going to go for the funkiest freedos for everyone. There are two CDs offered to be downloaded, and you will need both. Get both CDs, and where shall we then install them? Well, one could of course pick right away a real machine, but I wanted to keep things virtual. And for today's exercise, I have picked the Kemu virtual machine emulator. And that's a piece of software with which FreeDOS is working really nicely. Unfortunately, my more common weapon of choice sometimes, 86box.net, the IBM PC system emulator, is not cooperating well with FreeDOS. More details about that I'm going to show you in a future episode. But suffice it to say, I do not advise you to try it with it. I do advise you to try it with Camu. Both uh, giving you, of course, the possibility to create a raw disk image. And if things go well, I might even be able to transfer my virtual installation onto a compact flash card and to then, with a compact flash to IDE adapter and an IDE to SATA adapter, boot an old ThinkPad off it. But that is just a final bonus step. We first must go along installing our DOS system and windowing environment. Very well, now having acquired both the live ESO and the bonus ESO, 
we are in a position to launch Camu, which on my Linux machine, for instance, might be launched with a command like this. Ah, there seems to be but one step we need to do before we launch Camu and go towards installation, and that is the creation of our hard disk. I have chosen that I want to name it FDOS GUI with 967 cylinders, 16 heads and 63 sectors. And I want that this disk is created as a big slab of binary zeros. So on my Linux system, in order to create such a disk, I do not need to use the camu image command, I can use the classical unix dd command with a block size of 8k and a count of somewhat over 60,000. That is going to create a disk of just under 500 megabyte with a disk geometry that is amenable to use in compact flash cards. So if you create such an image and it is properly recognized and, and installed, then very likely it can boot FreeDOS on a real-world machine. Well, then let's do that first and then let's launch Camu. Okay. Yay, we got our hard disk. Okay. And let's get now into installing FreeDOS onto it. But let me perhaps just get into the details of the command for anyone not so acquainted with Camu. So first I'm saying I want to trigger Camu system i386, which is the 32-bit version of it. I want 64 megabytes of RAM. I want my just created hard disk file to be treated as a raw disk image. I want a PC BIOS. I want a single processor, single core machine. I want that the so-called Camu monitor, a control interface to give commands to Camu to be on standard I.O. that is this terminal I am starting Camu from. This is actually very comfortable as it allows you to copy paste into the terminal. I want that there is the FreeDOS live CD attached as a CD-ROM. I want a little bit of networking and I want to boot that CD-ROM. You, you could you do boot C if you wanted to boot actually the hard disk, but that will not work, of course, because there's nothing installed on it. And here we are now, ready to install FreeDOS 1.3. Now, when installing FreeDOS, but also other DOS operating systems, one of the first steps you will need to undertake is to partition your hard disk, which Im immediately necessitates a reboot. For that reason, your best venue is to get as fast as you can to the partitioning menu, which here in the FreeDOS Live CD means not going into the Live Environment mode, but instead picking the option Install to Hard Disk. This way, FreeDOS will not load everything it needs for a full FreeDOS experience, but it will load just enough to permit you the installation. And here we see it is meandering along and we are being asked for the preferred language. It is a good idea to pick English, of course, if you can for that makes chasing help online in various dark and shady corners much easier. 
And there we have it. Do I want to partition drive C, that is, reserve some place, even the entire thing can be reserved for our DOS installation? And yes, of course I want. So it is now partitioning the hard drive, which with a virtual disk also takes shorter, just like formatting will be momentary. And you see now we are asked to reboot. I admit when I was young and inexperienced this was truly puzzling. You just saw how it tried to boot from its hard disk but couldn't because it's just freshly partitioned but without anything on it yet. Now we install to hard disk again for that it's just simply faster. And 3DOS seems to have already switched into LBA mode so that the disk geometry shall not very much matter to it anymore. And we should now be invited to format the partition that has been just created. But it was this step where I reboot and again select my language and everything which in the past I found strange. We continue with the installation once again. So you are now as a novice worried will this happen a third or a fourth time but it will not. For now the menu has changed. We are no longer asked to partition. We are asked to erase and format which happens like PENG. <laughs> so this is our format disk. I mean nothing too special but yeah pressing a key enter And while the system itself I like to have in English, of course, you are supposed to pick a keyboard corresponding to your target machine. And as I plan to run the entire thing on an old ThinkPad with a German keyboard, I'm picking that. Your choice, of course, may differ. One somewhat annoying, to be frank, property is that while FreeDOS catches your country definition, that's not always the case for the GUIs available for FreeDOS. And here comes our first moment of peril. What do we want? A plain DOS system? or a full installation including applications and games. Well, that's funny because a plain DOS system will be about 20 megabyte, whereas the full installation is a quarter of a gigabyte. I shall pick the Las Vegas light show whistles and fireworks version, but without sources at the stage of this experiment. And as I am having here half a gigabyte of disk space, that will be sufficient. It is noteworthy though, that it does not provide for anything very much intermediary. With this I mean we are not somehow invited 
to have something like groups of programs the way you see that for instance in old slackware installations where you can say i want to have base and networking or base and development or base and graphical installations you understand what i mean you can have everything or nothing you're having the salad leaf or the wedding cake i did pick the wedding cake so <laughs> let's see how this is going what is more is that we are now only installing the things from the freedos live cd that in and of itself will not yet give us a gui okay This here will now take a while. It requires no in interaction by us. And we're seeing here installing the kernel and whatnot. Well, in the meantime, while this is happening, we may as well have a look around to have a bit of a look at open gem so that's the thing that Steffi essentially wants to see something like that and we will get there there are multiple forks of the original digital research gem windowing environment Digital Research was trying with this to compete, of course, against Windows, but also Macintosh, Atari, and whoever else developed GUIs at the time. When the race became impossible to win, Digital Research open-sourced GEM, which is a friendly as well as a smart move, as that made people continue its development in FreeGem and from FreeGem into OpenGem. I am going today to show you the installation of OpenGem, though I must personally tell you from my own subjective impressions that it is clearly buggier from my view than FreeGem. FreeGem is from 1999, OpenGem I believe reached a stable state somewhere in the early 2000s so they are like 10 years apart maybe a bit less maybe like eight years apart these two but normally one might wish to use free gem rather than open gem and the details of this we shall explore later in this episode the question, of course, will be where to get this wonderful gem thing from. And here you get links to GitHub as well as to the FreeDOS site. But having tried that, I can tell you this does not seem to be very much working. We will return to it later on. But following along the OpenGem website and trying to get it from there might actually prove an errand and it will be much better to get OpenGem from the FreeDOS bonus CD whose installation we shall explore in a second and which I told you in the beginning we should download. So how's the house yeah slow things here are slow well then I shall not let you wait and we shall meet again here once the installation has progressed a little further 
Ladies and gentlemen, two and a half hours later, Fridos 1.3 is finally ending up affairs in its installation. This is very clearly the slowest Fridos install I have ever had and the moment that is over I shall select reboot now or actually I shall just turn off the machine I'll better make a copy of that be before I continue along because I'm not going to spend another eternity in such an installation so I am now going to turn off the machine, make a copy of the disk, and then restart it with you so that we can have a look at our newly installed system. Copying the disk fortunately was very fast. And here I am ready to trigger Kemu again, but now Instead of triggering it with the live ESO, we're going to be triggering Camo with the bonus CD. And we will not be booting the CD, we will be booting the newly installed hard disk. And oh wonder, for some reason, Fridos here is perfectly snappy. It's just its installation took an eternity. But required other than that, on the positive side, no further interaction. So it's pretty much you trigger it and then go on an extended lunch or something. And when you're back, it will be installed. So here we are in Fridos. And let's do a dir on the C directory. And... Yeah, everything looks fine. Do you really want to install a GUI at all at this? Is something up to you? Because as it is, it's actually quite nice. I wonder whether it has this. No, it doesn't. That is oftentimes a Norton Commander clone abbreviation. But it surely has its own thing. Certainly PGME is a thing it has, which is pretty graphical. <laughs> blah, blah, etc. Et great, great, just, just great. Let's try with PGME. And there, yeah, updating menu cache and whatnot. But there you already have. Uh, not so bad DOS GUI. Looks certainly stylish. Look how they made the force look so that everything is, you know, in a bit of a different font and so on and so forth. I am fond of it. So you might as well decide that you do not want any GUI. But if you nevertheless do, and having here the bonus CD now inserted in the virtual drive what you can do is say F dimples this is free DOS blah 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 it's like dimples of free DOS and that's its package manager so from here you can install a couple further things which were not contained in the default free DOS installation and which were left to a bonus CD. It takes a bit of a moment to start up. I am standing by. I mean, where shall I go? What shall I do? We saw here half of Unix flash by from Vim to M player. FreeDOS is totally full of open source software known for 
the Linux environment. In fact, it has both Elvis and Vim for DOS and, and so on and so forth. So those of you coming from Linux will be perhaps happy to see a couple of things. Those of you coming from DOS will be a little bit feeling, what am I looking at? F Dimples is unfortunately terribly slow and as this took two and a half hours to install, let's greet you again when it has decided finally to work. I know what I did and I know why I suffered, so I restarted Camu. I forgot this option to enable the KVM virtualization and thereby accelerate things at least somewhat. Still, ah, oh, this is much better than it used to be. Well, still one should be patient. Archiverse. I do need an Arch Archiver time and again, as a matter of fact. Hmm. I actually want to show you the desktop environments, but I must say that was not bad. Development, as I am here, yes, I would like to have the simple C compiler and BW basic. The... Okay. Sure. I want this and I want that. You know what? I'm a kid in the bonbon shop and I cannot resist getting a couple of things from here given that they are here anyway. But actually what we're looking for, for is this section, graphical desktops. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is where we make our little X on open gem. But I also want to show you the other two, which all are having their pluses and minuses. Now the networking department certainly is interesting too. Hmm. Gosh, really? What? There is some interesting stuff here. Okay, I am taking this mini box. Like... Small Linux commands for resource limited systems, why not? Sound tools. Yeah, I like to have lame. But you see, it's difficult to control, in fact. I am using my keys to navigate, but it takes a bit of a moment until it does anything. So, and what do I want from networking? Yeah, well, Arachne is a little bit of a big thing, which may or may not work, depending on the target machine, but at 5 megabyte, let's give it a chance. And I want Dillo. I am not actually going to have any Ethernet DOS file system, network drivers and so on and so forth. If I can do something over a serial line, I shall be happy enough. Well, having now selected things, like here, you know, made our axis. We go with the arrow down. Come on, down arrow. Up arrow, down arrow. Why does it not work? Okay, left arrow. Down arrow. Does not work. Tabulator. Okay, I'm somewhere here. Next tabulator. Okay. So finally, I, I'm just not friends with this very much, you know. So now pressing enter and going to be waiting a little bit, of course, for this to install. Though I must say enabling KVM makes the situation so much better. Nonetheless, you see what it is doing. It's just unpacking things into directories and this is just going to take quite a while. So. I suggest permitting it to complete and then returning
to what should be a FreeDOS installation with graphical user interfaces of more complex nature. Now that our desired GUIs and all sorts of other packages have been installed, we can run gem. Can we? Gem is not a recognized command or file name. But if we say dir, then we are seeing here multiple directories of interest. Open gem, ozone, GUI and seal. These are the three graphical user environments we have installed. Very well. Now, pressing Ctrl, Alt and F like Foxtrot, I am maximizing the screen to make the DOS feeling more genuine. And if we now go to Open Gem and look around and try to start it with Gem, then we shall notice a couple of strange things, as also remarked by the main YouTube channel of FreeDOS. So we are having here a fully black and white environment. I don't actually mind that, but it's not how Gem looks the way everybody else is showing it. In desktop we are having here calculator, clock, print spooler and whatnot. We can open the hard disk, but everything is slightly weird, right? I cannot actually move this window anywhere and nothing seems to have window controls of proper nature. The FreeDOS main channel suggested that this here, this empty space, is a phantom close button. Wonderful! And you still don't get to have any scroll bars, so this is not it. And this is how Gem ends. What would you like to do? Control Alt F, Control Alt F, because unfortunately sometimes things get out of view a bit. But yeah, here we have everything again. What I want to do is return to DOS and back I am. It was told there that in a most unintuitive fashion you have to make that open gem directory a sort of own drive from which to run open gem and that then it would work and frankly this is was it this way yeah other way around And frankly, I find that absolutely mystic. I mean, yeah, it might work. But this is not something you can even remotely expect a user to come up with. So, unfortunately, that greatly damaged my respect for OpenGem on FreeDOS to begin with. So here it has restarted again, and if we now look at the hard disk, then ah, we are getting a proper window, and we can properly move it around, and we can increase its size, and we can look at things in a somewhat less rudimentary fashion. And it, it looks interesting and cute and one can put it into auto but but without that YouTube video from the FreeDOS channel, I would never have guessed how to start this properly. I have to admit, I did manage to somehow collide with the solution, but not recognize it as such, when I placed Gem onto a virtual CD and tried to run it from there and it ran just like here. It ran perfectly and I absolutely did not understand why. So that's the solution to run OpenGem from a root drive. But if you try to run anything in it, for instance command.com, then 
what is happening is that it's asking you for parameters, okay, and then you're thrown back into a full screen DOS environment, right? Yeah. And that's not how I imagine dealing with programs in a GUI. Like if it is just a sort of clicky mousey selector of full screen DOS apps, then that's not very precious to me. I want my DOS apps, if possible, to open in their own windows. Well, so that is how you get this, but this is also what you get. Now you can go chasing the internet for genuine jam apps, or you might consider opting perhaps to an for another GUI on FreeDOS. And given that we have multiple options, maybe we should explore some other of them. The funkiest environment you can have is SEAL. It's really seeing it is believing. I just forget sometimes what it's called. Was it SEAL? Was it MAIN? Yeah, it was SEAL. Yeah, it always complains a bit about the sound card. But then finally, here we are. And how are we here? I can click here and do you notice this fine semi-transparency here that I still see the folders beneath? I mean, man, this is cool. So whoever here wants to have a GUI on FreeDOS, I mean, SEAL certainly would appear like a sort of candidate, wouldn't it? Unfortunately, I did not manage to get the amazing simp graphical editor to work properly. I am still marveling at the name, absolutely marveling. Is, is this what, I don't know, guys are using in order to try to draw things for their e-girl or something? I have no idea. But anyway, this thing didn't really work and oh, I never seem to learn from my lesson that I can't seem to get out of it. Ah, well, unfortunately, my only exit so far has been to terminate the emulation. I, I may try something else, control L G, and now we may actually implore the camo monitor to do something. Send key. Alt F4. Oh, that did work. Yay! So we have sent it Alt F4 and I'm back in seal. And I can greet you, you most heartily from in, in here. Now, this emulation is so slow, apparently, that it doesn't catch all my key presses. I'm not greeting you heatily, but heartily. And moreover, it has completely forgotten that I wanted a German keyboard. So I'm back to a US American keyboard. I want to close it. Yes, I do want to close it. But my biggest gripes with it come from the fact that it's not always stable and that seems to have been my most elegant exit from it because normally when I exit seal 
my keyboard freezes and I cannot do anything else and I need to reboot. But that's how we crashed our way out of it. I shall respect that. And let us now enjoy something else. Let us go to the Ozone GUI, which was the third graphical environment we installed. And in my humble opinion, from the available ones, that perhaps looked like the most usable one. So these are all private projects. They are not historically relevant software, perhaps like OpenGem, where you can say this is from the major desktop wars from the 1990s. It's nothing like that. But nonetheless, it allows the computer to operate in a relatively elegant fashion. I am having here some sort of notepad. I believe I was also having here an opportunity to run DOS commands, which, you know, when you're having free DOS is sort of the point. The prompt is somewhat weird because it calls it system, but it seems to have just booted it this way. Yeah, If you click on it and say dir, then you see exactly the contents of the folder Ozone GUI. If you go upstairs and say dir, then you're seeing here the available drives. If you go to the C drive, you know, it has a bit of a unique so it's styling. Then still it shows you exactly the root directory of FreeDOS. Here is actually its own Ozone GUI directory. And so on and so forth. But it seems to be working... Ugh. Reasonably normally, except that my DOS path doesn't seem to have been take a note of in here. What happens if I go to FreeDOS bin and then want edit? But it should be here. What happens if I say dear edit dot whatever? It has no command line history. And it has again misinterpreted my keyboard as American. Elvis? Will Elvis help me? Elvis will not help me. Is at least the Arch Archiver which I see here working? No, it's not. It's just not taking things from the current directory. How well? run arch do i need to do anything special to persuade anyone running anything okay you know what i take that back that's completely unusable as well i again have to study who knows what in order to execute something in in some way which is not the usual way so you know ozone just let's quit oh yes i certainly want to exit it so, under these circumstances, what do we do? I'll tell you what we do. We go use PGME and we are just living happily ever after. <laughs> if, if I can see my mouse cursor, because right now I cannot see my mouse cursor, but it very much appears as if my keys are working and I can navigate around that way. Well, and that's pretty much it. I thank you very much for today's visit and I hope you enjoyed today's dip into free DOS GUIs. 
I hope to greet you here soon again for further adventures. And until we meet again, I hope you are going to be having a wonderful time. See you hopefully soon. Thank you for watching. And from me, goodbye. Post dictum, the moment of truth has arrived. So that is the think padding question. And down here is the compact flashcard attached in place of a hard drive. The machine has been set for compatibility mode in the BIOS, so it should see this as IDE. And before I even can finish talking, Fridos has in fact booted. Wow. If I go to Open Gem, eh, I was supposed not to go to Open Gem, right? SV subst E for instance open gem. Okay, so this was the way to start this, right? Oh, it did start. Even the mouse is working. Even the touchpad is working. It's like the trackball is less jumpy. The touchpad, though, is faster. So this is a graphical DOS workstation. Many thousand times faster, likely, than what DOS has ever expected to run on. Subscribe for more shenanigans. See you soon.